Now, you might also wonder that do you always have to find the greatest common factor by this tedious method of writing these lists of factors? And the answer is no, there is a quicker method. And that is especially quicker when your numbers are bigger. And that is using factoring. And I'm going to show you just one example, because if you're in sixth grade, you may not actually need to know this. But I want to show you one example. Okay, if we need to find the greatest common factor of two numbers, 120 and 210 here, for example, I'm going to factor both of them. I'm going to find the prime factorization of both of them. So, let me find the prime factorization of 120 here using the factor 3. We get 3 times 40, and then 2 times 20, and then over here, 4 times 5, and then 2 times 2. All right. So I have 3, 2, 2, 2, and 5. That's make, that makes the prime factorization to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And now we will do the same for 210. 210. That would be 7 times 30. And 30 is 3 times 10. And 10 is 2 times 5. So now I get 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. And now for the greatest common factor, I will pick anything that is common in these prime factorizations. So there's 2 and 2 that are common. 3 and 3 are common and 5 and 5 are common. So the GCF is 2 times 3 times 5, whatever was common in both, which is 30. Lastly, we're going to tie in this concept of GCF with distributive property. And this, even though it might not use, look super useful right now, it is very useful in algebra. But if we are not yet to, into algebra, so we don't have x's here, we have plain numbers, this is going to keep it easy for you. We have two areas, one of them is 36 square meters, and the other is 8 square meters. The question is, can we express those two areas? We don't even know what shape those areas are, just that so much. Can we express them as two rectangles side by side, like this? This, of course, would be the greater area, 36 square meters and 8 square meters by its side, so that they form a one whole rectangle, yet each one of them being a rectangle. Okay, and to solve this problem, I need to find here this side length that is common to both of them. Okay, this bigger one will be this big rectangle, you know, you could say, oh, it's going to be 2 times 18 square meters, or it could be 6 times 6, it could be, you know, something times something that makes 36. But whatever number you put here, it has to work for the 8 square meters too. Something times something makes 8. So, what we're going to use, we're going to use the greatest common factor of 36 and 8. And thinking of 8, 8 has very few factors. It's divisible by 1 and 2 and 4 and 8. And so of those, 1, 2, 4 and 8, 4 is a factor of 36. So. 4 is a factor of both of them. We'll put 4 here. And then we get 4 times 9 for the first rectangle and 4 times 2 for the second rectangle. Now I'm going to write here an addition. 36 plus 8. That's the area of the whole big rectangle. But I'm going to express it now as a 4 times 4 times, and then this is 9 plus 2. This side is 9 plus 2. 4 times this side is the total area, okay? This process here that I actually did here is called factoring. And you will use it in algebra when you have actually x's and y's and stuff like here, instead of just numbers. Let's do the same with 20 and 35. It is as if this is 20 square meters this is 35 square meters, they are areas, but we want to place them as rectangles side by side. So, let me draw a rectangle then. This time the big areas on that side. What number can I put here? 
I want to use the greatest common factor of 20 and 35. Let's think what that is. 20. What are factors of 20? It's divisible by 1 and 2 and 4 and 5 and 20. Which ones of those would also be factors of 35? 1, 2, 4, 5, 20. 1 and 2? No. 1, 5. 5 is the greatest common factor. Yes. And so this area is 20. It's going to be 5 times 4. This area is 35. It's going to be 5 times 7. Right? And now I'm going to express this. The addition of these areas, the area of the whole rectangle, I'm going to express it as this side times that side. 5 times 4 plus 7. Lastly, 9 and 51. What might be the greatest common factor? Can you tell while I draw the rectangle? Okay, now 9 has very few factors, just 1 and 3 and 9. Is any of them a factor of 51? Now 1 is, but 3 is also. 3 will work. 3 here, 3 here, so we get 9 square something, 9 square feet or whatever here, and 51 square feet here. 3 times what is 51? Maybe you need to use long division, but I happen to know by half. It's 17. And now we express this total area of the two rectangles as this times that whole side. Or 3 times 3 plus 17. Okay, notice I didn't use the multiplication symbol here between 5 and the parentheses, 5 times. And that is perfectly alright. In algebra, we do not write any unnecessary multiplication signs. I hope this was helpful.